Well, you can't say we haven't got a bad weekend coming up. Hennessy is the star of the show, of course, at Newbury. Paul, Hennessy is many people's favourite race of the entire calendar. Is it yours? Uh, I wouldn't say it's my favourite, but it is one that I look forward to. Yeah. I mean, there's lots of big big handicaps and big races to come, aren't there? But uh, no, Hennessy is a, is a great race in its own right. And has it been kind to you? Uh, I was looking at that the other day now and I can't seem to remember it. I mean, I, I think the last one that I went really close with was when Joe Darmy got beaten off around 10 stone 4 and right. went, went on to win the Gold Cup yeah, four months later. So, yeah. Yeah. so uh, no, I, I can't say it's been the best race. OK, well, we'll start with the Hennessy, but there are plenty of gems out there. Um, I know that you fancy two in this, Invictus and Highland Lord. Are they still your fancies? Um, I... You know, if Invictus is as good as he was, then he has to go very close, you know, with a clear round. I mean, about 21 runners it is. Mm. It is probably going to be about 10 to 1 the field on, on, on the morning of the race. So, you know, you can't say I've got great value. I haven't backed him at 9 to 1, you know, uh, a few weeks ago. Um, but, you know, he's got a victory over Bobsworth and Silviniaco Conti to his name in the yeah. Reynoldstown chase. That was the last time he ran, mm. 651 days ago. That's yeah. the problem. But he's been dropped. He's on a mark of 145. Um, he probably would have been nearly favourite of 155 last year had he, had he, had he made the field. Um, so, you know, if he's as good as he was, he's got a massive chance. Mm. Now, Alan King has been talking down his chances recently, um, says he's got them as fit as he can, etc. Mm. Um, but it's a huge ask, and it is a huge ask. But, you know, there'll be a little bit of anxiety, I suppose, in the King camp anyway for, for not having a horse off for that long. Yeah. So he doesn't want to be too bullish and look stupid and mm. if something goes wrong. But, you know, I, I think that if he has if he has retained all his ability, he has to go. Racing down towards the last, and it's Invictus for Robert Thornton, who's moved through the lead. In second, Alfie Spinner, Silvio Narco Conti hasn't lasted home. Bobsworth is getting ahead of steam up, but Invictus has four lengths in hand over the last, and has jumped it really well. Alfie Spinner and Bobsworth in second, off up the running, and it's Invictus who leads by three to four lengths. Bobsworth is staying on, but it's a vain pursuit of Invictus, and Robert Thornton is back from injury, back to back success. I mean, a literal reading of that form, beating Bobsworth and Silviano, Silviano Conti, throws him in here, really. Yeah, absolutely, it? even if they weren't at their best. You know what I mean? They, you know, Bosworth is rated around 180, Silviano yeah. Conti 172, so, mm. you know, he's in here off 145. You know, the layoff, we don't know. I mean, you know, he, he could blow out, pull up, and we'll never see him again. Yeah. Or we could win. Yeah, right? okay. Yeah. The second string to your bow, Highland Lodge. Um, what's the reasoning behind this? Um, well, he ran a very, very good race behind um, stand, uh, a standing ovation, uh, the pipe thing that's been winning you know, yeah. race after race. And uh, he, he was giving absolutely chunks of weight and uh, only just got beat. Uh, and he's... Um, you know, he's quite low in a handicap, he's favourite for the Welsh National now. Mm. My worry about him now is that he wants soft ground and it looks very much like that we're not going to get that. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm, I'm not as keen on him as I was, although the trainer seems to be quite keen on him. And he's, held yeah. his, he's held his price at around 12s. Yeah. So, you know, he's got a chance, but I do think there's probably faster horses in the race than him now, uh, given what the ground's going to be like. OK, um, I'm just going to ask you for a half a sentence, if there mm. is such a thing on some of the more fancied ones, yeah. let's just knock them out. Uh, Katenko? Another one I think probably wants really soft ground. Mm -hmm. um, he, he was, you know, he was being backed as a Gold Cup horse last year, so yeah. he, you know, you've got to take him seriously, but I think he wants deep ground as well. Okay, Prince de Beauchesne? Yeah, been around for ages, keeps missing. You know, I think he's the latest punter's guess in a, in a wide open race that he's been smashed up because he's coming over here, Willie Mullins, Ruby Walsh, and yeah. he's fit and that, but I mean, he's 10 years old and you know, I would have thought there were there were better handicapped horses in the race. Um, this one could start favourite, Lord Windermere. Been quite a lot of money for him lately. Yeah, been, been, people have been very bullish about him. The trainer's very bullish about him. Um, I'm still a little bit concerned that the last year's staying chase, staying novices weren't great. Mm -hmm. right, you know, so you know, we'll we'll see. I mean, the trainer seems to think he's a lot better for last year, and obviously the more likely raced ones have more improvement in them. Yeah, so it's difficult to, to ignore some of these. What about? Um, the Ascot former Hublon, de, Hublon des Oblo and Mary King. Uh, yeah, Hublon des Oblo was a horse I was backing all last year and I can't believe I missed him first time out this year because he does go extremely well fresh. Um, I think he, you know, he goes on all sorts of ground. He has gone up in the weights. I don't think that race has, has been a particularly good guy than the Hennessy mm. um, over time. Uh, so I'd be a little bit worried about that. This is far more competitive. Um, 
a little bit worried about the big fences for them as well. Um, just a couple more. Um, Rocky Creek. Paul Nichols has a great record in the Hennessy. He does have a great record and he seems to be quite bullish. And you know, This is another one that's been well back recently and I think this one will go off favourite. Um, mm. he, does, he does seem quite bullish about him. Yeah. Um, he's got no experience in big field handicaps, but you know that is the case, I suppose, for a lot of second season chasers. They tend yeah. to run in small field novices. Um, he's taken up Cato Star's box, um, so they obviously really rate him. They yeah. put him in there for a reason. Um, he says he's a huge horse, you know, more 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 Denman type than a than a Cato Star type. But uh, I don't know. Lots of lots of Nichols horses have seemed to be needing the run. Um, now, Barry Geraghty's chosen Triolo de Lane over Hadrian's approach. A bit of a surprise there? Yeah, quite surprising. I mean, I don't, you know, I'm not a massive fan of Hadrian's approach, to be honest. I don't think he jumps well enough. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they always think that he's got a mistake in him. Uh, you know, so I, I can see that. But, I mean, Triolo de Lane is probably, you know, pretty exposed. Mm. So I'm, I wouldn't really be looking for the, for the Henderson camp for the winner. No, OK. And finally, one that I think that you fancied at a price, Theatre Guide. I think it might run well. I mean, it was behind Hadrian's approach last time, and Hadrian's approach is 10s and these 33s. Um, he travelled really well for a long way, and then like a lot of Colin Tizards, he blew up. Um, I think he's quite decent. Whether he's man enough for this sort of race, I don't know. Mm. Um, I'd throw another one in right down the bottom as well, Lock Bar. It's the only horse in the field that's actually won at Newbury, which is quite surprising, oh, right, yeah. which is quite surprising, really. Yeah. Um, I think he's not badly handicapped on the pick of his form, which has come at this track. Um, obviously, he's in a far more competitive race than he's used to. Mm. But uh, he's got ability, and you know, and he goes well at this time of season. Yeah, and we haven't even mentioned our father. Uh, yeah, well, an another one. He's won the first time out every time he's every year he's raced. He's got plenty of talent, and he could easily be extremely well handicapped off one four seven. Mm. Um, what he's actually beaten over fences, I don't know, because he slammed Cyclone twenty lengths first time up last year. But Cyclone has done absolutely nothing since. And I'd be slightly worried that he wants soft ground. Mm. And, you know whether, you know he seems to lose his form straight away after his first run as well. So yeah. whether he's actually got the constitution for a race like the Hennessy, you know, I mean, he's not going to win this on the bridle. Yeah. Uh, you know, so whether he's got that sort of, you know, constitution for it, I, I wouldn't know. Okay. Well, whichever way you look at it, it's a fascinating affair. If you still need need a hand picking the winner, he's Dave Orton with the trends in the race. Dave's a Rocky Creek fan, by the way. Okay, thank you. Time to pick the bones out of this absorbing chase. One of the greatest chase handicaps of the entire season, isn't it? So what have we got? Okay, let's have a look at this. Uh, classy sorts. Now, you may be surprised here. This knocks out a few key runners. Has won a class one or class two handicap 10 of the last 10. Okay, who does that knock out? Well, the first time upper. Our father yet to go that far, just that beginner's chase to his name, albeit impressively around Cheltenham. Um, what else have we got? Hadrian's Approach, which is an interesting one. Uh, he hasn't really got that requisite class yet, despite the fact he's gone, well, he's been beaten ahead basically at that level, but he hasn't quite gone in. Those towards the top of the weights, I think seven of the last 10 have carried more than 11 stones. So look for something with real class, knocks a fair few out there. What else have we got? The age stat, the perennial age stat, six to eight, nine of the last 10. Now lots of um, six, seven, eight year olds in there, but Prince de Beauchene, the choice of Ruby Walsh, and he's got a decent chance of his best form, despite carrying slightly high handicap mark. He's going to do for a lot of people each way. No 10-year-old won for quite some time. Denman, of course, the last nine-year-old to win in the last 10 years. Actually, we'll look, we'll look at it. No horse since 10 or older has won since 1981, and 75 have been beaten. Plenty against uh, Prince, um, Prince de Beauchene, despite the fact he comes from Team Mullins. Uh, won at least 50% of their chase starts. Now, this is fascinating, this. Lord Windermere, he falls down on that, likely to go off favourite the RSA winner. RSA winners do have a good record. Uh, course winners also have a good record, but we're really low on course winners this year, so that's a, that's a stat we can't really apply. Our father, he again bombs out on that. And Highland Lodge, lot, got lots of form with Rocky Creek this. Uh, from a handicapping point of view, he's been backed by some of the shrewd ones, not classy enough. Rocky Creek, however, has won over 50% over of his chase starts with Team Nichols, who've won this three part, uh, uh, times in the last decade and he'll just about do for me. Right, we'll move on to the long distance hurdle now. Um, grade two, fascinating affair, with At Fisher's Cross making his seasonal um, appearance. Paul, do you think At Fisher's Cross is a likely, well, possible winner of the um, world hurdle at Cheltenham? So presumably you'll think, him, you'll think he'll win this as well. 
I think if he's fit enough, he. I think if he's fit enough, he, he ought to win. Um, he's probably not going to, you know, on official marks, he won't be the highest rated in the field. But, you know, he looked really, really good last year. I mean, he beat the new one. Um, there aren't going to be many horses that will be doing that over the next year or so. Mm. Um, I know he sort of outstayed him after the new one went clear. But the fact is that he battled and he and he and he really ran on strongly. And then he went, you know, and then he went to Cheltenham and he hacked up in the Albert Bartlett. The Albert Bartlett's turning into, you know, possibly one of the, the best races at the festival for future winners. I mm -hmm. think three of the seven winners have already gone and won on the festival again. And um, he hacked up there, you know, and absolutely hacked up that aim tree on much, much faster ground, proving that he goes on on the sort of ground that he's gonna get uh, at Newbury. Um, you know, it's going to take something good, and you know the, the main danger, Celestial Holy and Reb de Savello have got to give him four pound as well. Mm -hmm. So I think he's got an awful lot in his favour. Okay, so at Fisher's Cross, maybe just a watching brief first mm -hmm. time up. But um, now this is a selection in the three thirty-five two mile one fell on handicap chase, and a Turge. I think you were a bit annoyed to miss him last time at Cheltenham, weren't to you? Miss him? I was, I was disgusted with myself because I'd actually <laughs> tipped him in the weekender, and he goes and wins at nine to one. And on the day of the race, I've changed my mind. I've backed two others. And then going through the race, I mean, it was one of the most painful experiences I've ever mm. seen because he was hacking up from a long way out, at least a mile out. He was the only horse you could you could possibly consider backing, and and he won really easily. And you know, I thought that was you know a little bit unusual for him because you know quite often he gets a bit behind and then he flies late. But this time he was always there. He had no trouble going the pace, mm -hmm. and he flew up the hill. Now he likes Cheltenham. He's won there twice. Um, this is a flatter track. But he is going an extra furlong. Uh, he's going to love the long running, and um, you know he, he's had loads and loads of starts in his life. But he just looks like he's improving, and you know it's, it's a decent field, and you know there are good horses against him. But you know he's the only one I want to be on. You don't think you're, you're, you're fancying him on the rebound factor? Mr. No, Lassen not at all. Because you know, so no, you know, it, it, it did it annoy me, but I was annoyed with myself, not the horse. Right? You know what I mean? And he just surprised me about you know how easily he did win. Mm. Right? You know, because you know, I thought I'd see him flying up there late, and he might just get up or something like that. But you know, there was no point throughout the race where I didn't think he was going to win. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's Annie Turz, and that's in the three thirty-five at Newbury. Okay, we're moving across to Newcastle now, where the big race is the Fighting Fifth Hurdle. All eyes on the reappearance of the champion hurdle hope, my tent or yours. Before we get stuck into the race, here's the connections of that horse and um, how they think he's going to do in this race and for the rest of the season. You know, he's, got a, he's got a very similar profile to Paul Darlan did last year. You know, second in the Supreme, won at Daintree, um, then he won the Christmas hurdle. Um, and he was very impressive. Darlan was very impressive there that day. So that again is where we want to see my tent or yours. The fighting fifth's a good stepping stone. It's, it's perfect timing for the Christmas hurdle. So, you know, when it all went well, I mean, it, it, you'd, you'd like to be winning at Newcastle. He doesn't have to win to say he's not a top class horse, but he's in very good form. He's obviously got a melodic rendezvous and Grammetti is his main opposition, but hopefully, um, hopefully he's in good form. Nicky Henderson's very happy with him, so it'll tell us whether he'll be um, up to being a, a champion hurdle horse, and obviously before that he'll be going for the, the William Hill Christmas hurdle. So hopefully, hopefully come in on Saturday and set the season, get the season off on the right track. Okay, Paul, we've heard there from um, Tony McCoy and Nicky Henderson. They're quite bullish about uh, my tent or yours. They think he can go a long way. I don't think you could. I don't think you could argue with him because he looked like an absolute superstar when he won the Betfair hurdle last year at Newbury. Um, and I think a flat two miles, you know, he might be, you know, he might be good enough to win a champion hurdle, but I think a flat two miles is always going to suit him best because mm. he's got so much speed, he travels strongly. Um, he did get beaten early last season by Chatterbox, so he's not a certainty first time up, and Nicky Henderson has obviously had binocular beaten a couple of times in this race, you know, at a short price. But he looks, you know, he looks like he's going to turn up at Cheltenham, you know, with a major, major chance. It'd be interesting if he goes for the Christmas hurdle where the new one's going to go. Mm -hmm. Um, they actually fought out the finish of an entry bumper uh, in, the, in the spring a couple of seasons ago. The new one beat uh, my tent or yours there. Um, so it'd be interesting to see them take on e each other again, mm. uh, again on a flat track as well. Um, at the moment, though, I think he doesn't have the strongest, you know, it looks like a decent race on paper, but I think he's a fair bit better than most of these. Do you? Yeah, I mean, there's one or two speed horses in here. I know Nicky Henderson thinks that my tent or yours has a speed to run on the flat, but the likes of Cockney Sparrow has has won on the flat and, you know, could put it up to him perhaps. Yeah, she's still taking quite a leap in class, mm. though, on what she's done. I mean, you know, she's she's tough, she's genuine, 
you know, and she'll put everything in. But whether she's quite got the class of these, I, yeah. I wouldn't know. Like, you know, I'd imagine her long term aim is going to end up being the mayor's hurdle, yeah. not the champion hurdle. Mm. You know, so, uh, you know, I like her, uh, you know, but I don't like her in this race. No, I like John Quinn as well, though, in one of Oh, God, he's a fantastic trainer. Mm. He's a really shrewd trainer under both codes. Yeah. Like, like, you know, and, you know, they're, they're fully entitled to have a go. Yeah. But, you know, whether she's going to prove quite good enough at this level, I doubt it myself. Uh, we've got to mention a couple of others. Melodic Rendezvous, perhaps the form of his last win not working out too well. I was a big fan of Melodic Rendezvous last year and I was, I was backing him all the time and I really wanted to see him run at the festival, but obviously he had to miss it. Um, and, you know, he's clearly done nothing wrong. Uh, the trainer said he wasn't, he, he wasn't fully wound up. Um, I'm just a little bit worried that that form didn't work out particularly well because a runner-up got thumped at yeah. Haydock next time. He may have, found, may have found the race coming too soon. Um, but I think Melodic Rendezvous has got a got to up it again and whether he's a speed horse at two miles is mm. another matter mm. not 100 percent certain that he is yeah he, yeah he might not be but grimetti arguably is uh well he stayed well enough didn't he i mean he, he was uh um you know, he, was, he was a he was a good juvenile hurdler you know very good i mean you know, he hacked up at aintree didn't he you know so so he's a decent, decent performer. He's been off a while, hasn't he? Over mm. the hurdles. Um, yeah. You would worry about him. I, don't know, I thought he might win the. Um, I thought he might win the uh, Greatwood. Mm -hmm. um, I put him up for that, and I was surprised he came here. Uh, so he's obviously been pleasing Alan King. Mm. Um, where do he's quite the speed horse that he looks? Because the juvenile, the juvenile horses that run in races like the Triumph, they tend to stay a fair, you know, stay, tend to stay fairly well. Whether he's actually a speed horse for a, for a track like Newcastle, I'm not 100% certain. Okay, but you, so um, if you were going to have a bet, probably my tent or yours, but you yeah, just I to don't, watch it. I perhaps. don't bet those sort of prices. No. Not, you know, so uh, I, will, I will leave it for punting purposes, but you know, I think it'll win. I'd like to see him win because I'd like to see him and the new one go to, go to uh, Kempton unbeaten this season and see who's best. Uh, so you may well not be backing that, but one that you probably will be backing is another favourite of yours. We've talked about a couple already, but I know Hey Big Spender. I think you'd marry him, wouldn't you, if you could? Hey, yeah, well, you know, you do, you do find yourself getting attached to these horses, don't you? <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, and, and Hey Big Spender was one I was backing as a novice, and I had a really decent bet on him at Cheltenham when he fell. Uh, and, and in the novice handicap chased it, and I thought he was a certainty that day. And uh, obviously I was wrong, because he didn't win, but he did go up to, he did end up on an official mark of 157, which is much, much higher than he was racing off that day, so I wasn't far away. He's a very decent horse when he's at his best. He stays extremely well, mm. um, likes cutting the ground. Um, last year was a bad season for him, mm -hmm. uh, you know, but consequently he's dropped very yeah. quickly in the handicap. And um, you know, he was down to, he, he was a peak of 157. He was down to 142 at the start of this season. He ran at Aintree in a veterans race, and, and it was a fair veterans race mm. as well. It, was, you know, it wasn't just a bunch of really old horses that you know, have got nothing left again. No. And uh, for much of the race, he looks in an absolute different league. Mm. You know, in fact, turning at home, he was trading at one to four and running on Bedford, mm. which is you know, that far out you know, is ridiculous, but I mean, that's how well he looked like he was yeah. going. And um, you know, he then just blew up, and I'm sure it was just a case of not being fit enough. Mm. Um, he won this race off £10 higher two years ago. Um, I'll be really surprised if he doesn't win it again because mm. I think he's very well handicapped. He was dropped a couple of pounds after that injury. Yeah, they dropped him two pounds for that. Mm. And I thought it was very generous by the handicapper given how well he went through the race. Now, uh, you know, the only other reason for him to stop so quickly was that he's got a win problem. Mm -hmm. uh, in which case he'll do the same again. But I just think it was the fact that, not, that he wasn't fit and uh, I do expect him to win. Mm. OK, well, there's some uh, great races to enjoy. Um, your best selection, do you think? Oh, Hey Big Spender. Hey Big Spender, OK. Hey Big Spender is then for... Paul, that's in the 240 at Newcastle. There's a good card too at Fairy House. Here's David Jennings with his best bet. Thanks a million, Rob. Yeah, obviously the, the card on Saturday is not quite as high quality as, as the stuff on Sunday, which we all can't wait for. But there's still some interesting betting opportunities on the card. And I think the best one might be Perfect Smile in the Bally Hack handicap chase at 125. Now, people might remember, Perfect Smile was a very decent uh, novice hurdler back a few years ago and was very much the apple and old meat's eye back then, but his form has completely tailed off in the last two years. But there was definite signs of a revival the last day at Cork. He was down to a mark of 125. He was running a two-mile handicap chase, and nobody really knew what to expect. He went off 16-1, to 1, but he jumped for absolute fun on the Robbie, Robbie Coggan that day, looked the winner the whole way, and was just collared right on the line by a stable companion, Protaris. And... Um, 
he should come on for that run. It was his first run since July, and he's only he's up five pound to one to one thirty, but he's still far better off with Portaris. And I just think if the, if that old flame is still burning at all, I, and with Paul Carberry back aboard, I think Perfect Smile will be able to get back to winning ways.